Our fall season continues with Handel's Julius Caesar, the very first Baroque opera ever mounted on the Michigan Opera Theater stage. Written in 1724 and regarded as Handel's finest opera, Julius Caesar is hailed as a masterpiece of 18th century Baroque opera. Today, most people associate Handel with his oratorio, The Messiah, a work we present every holiday season in a combined classic gospel and jazz version we call Too Hot to Handle. In his own time, he was most famous for his operas, which enthralled the London public, even though they were sung in Italian. In the opening scene of the opera, Julius Caesar arrives on the banks of the Nile in triumph. He sings an aria proudly proclaiming his victory and claiming his laurels as conqueror. The audience, unfamiliar with Handel's work, may be startled because they will hear Rome's greatest warrior singing in a high, clear voice, unlike a traditional tenor or baritone. Instead, they will hear the voice of a countertenor, indeed one of the world's most famous, David Daniels, singing in the alto range which Handel intended for the lead roles in Baroque opera. They were written for male singers who retained their pre-pubescent vocal range through surgical intervention, the kind of singer known as a castrato. These singers were the great stars of their day. In the 19th and 20th century revivals, castrato roles were given to women, but today we are fortunate to have a growing number of outstanding countertenors who are able to sing in a vocal range and quality appropriate to the roles originally created for castrati without making the supreme sacrifice. Baroque opera was all about great singing and lavish scenery. These vocal stars were expected to entrance the audience with arias that ranged from sweet long lyric lines to fiery and difficult coloratura. They demonstrated a range of vocal styles in a series of da capo arias in which the first section depicted a specific emotion, followed by a contrast, and then returning to the first section. But this time, the singer was expected to enthrall by elaborating and improvising wonderful variations on the original section. Our production of Julius Caesar has been transported to the late 1920s, early 30s, the golden age of the Hollywood movie musical. More specifically, to an MGM back lot where an exotic movie with an Egyptian setting is being filmed. Cleopatra will be gowned and coiffed like Jean Harlow and Caesar will look like Indiana Jones. In this staging, Cleopatra's scheme to make Caesar fall in love with her has all the glitz of a big Hollywood scene. Clouds part to reveal a pyramid, and the pyramid comes apart to reveal Cleopatra. Near the end of the opera, movie theater seats will be brought in as the secondary characters join the audience as spectators for the final love duet by Caesar and Cleopatra and then lights flicker to indicate that the two found immortality on the silver screen as the opera closes.